Buenas tardes todos. ¿Cómo están ahora en este bonita día aquí en Bakersfield, California? Good afternoon, everybody. How are you all doing today? Hope you're having a blessed day. Today we're going to be talking about unused muscles, and we'll be in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul is talking about those that are being unused in the church today. You know, so as the body has muscles sometimes that aren't being used, it causes other muscles to, to do the extra work. And that causes a lot of tension, a lot of strain. And we see that happening in the church, not just now, but even throughout history. That's always been a challenge, okay? And this just takes me back to years ago, about nine years ago. But even before that, I always had back issues. I had back issues because a lot of stuff that abuse I went through growing up. And I also became a power lifter. <laughs> and I did two things properly because I thought I knew everything and very arrogant and cocky, you know, but there's consequences for our actions. So back pain was one of them. But my back pain got different. It was more of a spine issue where the pain was just like, whoa, this is hardcore. Going into my neck, it was causing my hip, my legs, my knees are hurt. And I'm like, man, this is intense. But when I moved it to Hatchby, I got a new doctor. So that new doctor, you know, went ahead and had me take all these tests to see different specialists. So she sent me to see an RA specialist here in Bakersfield. So after, uh, I don't know, a few months of tests, blood work, and x-rays, different things, um, I was diagnosed with a spine disease called AS. And AS is pretty much known as a bamboo disease where your spine turns into bamboo. And when your spine turns into bamboo all the way in your neck, you pretty much can't walk and you're disabled and a lot of pain. So thankfully for me, even though I've had this for a few years, I didn't know it, um, just the lower part of my spine had uh, fused together. The issue with that is when, you're, when your spine fuses together, it sticks together and smashes all these other nerves that go to other organs in your body, which explain why I had abdominal pains a lot, stomach pain, um, heart issues, the list goes on. So what I came to find out is that the reason my body was acting the way it was because it was properly in balance. My back did not properly develop and it, nor was it functioning right. But because of all the pain that I was going through with my body, I was confused, my brain was confused, my body was confused. My bottom part of my body, all the muscles there that were not really created to function and, and take the strain of the upper body was, were doing all the work while a lot of the muscles up here were being unused because of the pain. Well, because of that, that's why it caused a lot of pain. So I was imbalanced. So through um, consistent treatment, which I go through consistently, physical therapy, being educated, awareness, um, exercises, the way I eat different things, is taking the, a lot of that stress off. So my body and my brain and my mind have learned to actually be in balance. So all the muscles that are up here are actually doing the work they should be doing. So my bottom part of my body, my upper part of my body are working together in unison to where before it was causing tension, strain, and stress, you know, which caused a lot of pain. And the reason I'm talking about that today is because in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is comparing the body to how the church functions, the way the body functions and the way the church functions. So I'm just going to dive right into it real quick. Here we go. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the, be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members yet one body. So here Paul is again using an example and illustrates, you know, how every part of the human body is essential, okay, to the function of that body. Every part of the body, the body that God's creating us has its proper role and responsibility, which helps the body to function properly when reused that way. Now, Paul also uses the body as an analogy for a church, for church unity and for church teamwork. And I've always said this phrase, you've heard me say it, teamwork makes a dream work, which is so true. When we work as a team, not just physically, but spiritually, the church is moving. All the right parts are moving. When we're all moving in the right parts, using the gifts that God has given us, like the body does, we're functioning good, we're moving forward. So that's what Paul is talking about here. Well, during that time in the church of Corinth, they were morally corrupt. They were allowing a lot of the philosophies, a lot of the, the, the um, influences of the world at that time, even in Rome, to come in 
infiltrate these people. They brought in selfishness, they brought in pride and a lot of crazy things. But because of this, it led to many of the people there that were serving to be discontent. They weren't happy with the gifts they had. You know, they were becoming selfish, wanting other gifts, wanting other roles, wanting other titles that they had not been given. See, a lot of people during that time, they wanted the title, but you know, they didn't want the responsibility with it. And then that happens in the church today too. Not just, I'm not just specifically saying us, but churches as a whole, you have those people like, man, I'm called. I feel like I'm called. I, I want this title. I want to be this leader. I want to be this pastor. I want to be this worship leader. I want this youth pastor, all this stuff. But they're not willing to take the responsibility that comes with it. So these people were doing that. They were being very selfish. But what made it worse is that the selfish attitude led them to believe that God had mistaken his call on them, that he has mistakenly given the wrong gifts, that he's mistakenly given them wrong ass ass um, assignments and, and callings, you know, and that's just hard. That's a horrible place to be in. Now, God has given each believer, myself and you, gifts that are to be exercised for the common good of the church on a consistent basis. This is going to be touchy right here, but it's the truth, okay? But when some don't pull their weight, others far less gifted in those areas must pitch in, okay? Even people that have other gifts that are, already have responsibilities have to pitch in, okay? But this is the problem with that. Even though the body of Christ continues to function, even though it continues to move forward, it's not functioning at its best level. It's not functioning or moving at the level that it should be at, okay? And when this happens, this leads others to be overworked. It leads others to be overserved, and that's not a healthy church, my friends, okay? Now, God wants to use our spiritual gifts to benefit others in the church. That's what it boils down to. When we work together, when we are committed, we are helping to keep the body of Christ healthy and strong. And I'm not just talking about physically, I'm talking about spiritually. When we all work together, when all those that have the right roles, when all those that God has called and brought together are working together like a fine machine, like the body, everything's balanced and working together, man, it's benefiting the church. It's benefiting the church. It's benefiting the community. It's benefiting the gospel when we're all moving forward. Now, I want to ask this question and really think about this one. And in no way am I saying that none of you are doing this, but it's a question we have to ask ourselves, including myself, okay? What has God gifted you to do so that you can help relieve the strain the church is experiencing? And all churches are experiencing the strain, okay? And we are experiencing the strain because of everything that's going on, all right? Uh, but what can we do, you and my, you and I, what can we do to relieve that strain with the gifts and call that God has given us? Are you given to your all? Can you honestly sit back and say, man, I'm giving it 100% for the Lord. I'm giving 100% for our church, for our people. Can you honestly say that? Or are you just, I'm just giving 50%. I'm giving 40%. You have to ask yourselves, okay, if that's the case, what is causing you to not move forward? Because I'm gonna be honest with you. As a church, now that Pastor David's here, we're planning on moving forward. You know, we're gonna do what we need to move forward to continue with the calling that God has given us, the vision that God has given us for the church, for our community, you know, for the future. And as a church, you know, or any church, it's important to have the right people in place that are gonna help get us to the next level, to the next goal, okay? And let's just face it, times are gonna get tougher. There's just no, there's no way around it. When will they get tougher? I don't know. But they're gonna get tougher. And you have to ask yourself, if you're struggling right now to serve because of what the country's going through, are you actually gonna be able to serve when things get tougher? And I'm not putting anyone down in any way, I'm not. Because the, the reality of this is that God, in certain times in life, God calls and prepares people for such a time as this. He calls people and prepares them to serve in the right moments. You know, so not everyone's gonna be called to do that. So we have to ask ourselves this question. You know, but what I do wanna tell you is that um, I want to thank you all for everything you've been doing, for your commitment, for your service, for your dedication, not just to the Lord, but to the church, for your prayers, um, just for do, you know, a lot of you um, are, are just like going above and beyond what God has called you to do, which is an amazing thing and it's helping during this time. And there's some of you that just can't, but for very understandable and respectful reasons. So I don't want anyone to feel like um, they're being bashed right now. No, no, I'm saying this out of love. And I'm saying this for all of us, including myself, because God has given me gifts. What other gifts that God has given me can I bring to the table outside of what I'm doing right now? Because I know that I'm all in and I want to do whatever I can to help not just the church, but to help 
the kingdom of God. You know, so this goes for every single one of us, but do we have any unused muscles in our lives? You know, are we being unused? Do you want to be used? Do you, are you in a place where you're like, man, what do I want to be used by you more? Man, let us know. We will, we can use so much more help. We can use so much more service. You know, we can use so much more leadership. You know, but love you guys so much. It's an honor to serve with you guys. It's an honor to know you guys. But most importantly, it's an honor to know Jesus Christ. Hope you enjoy this. Um, you guys have a great day and we'll see everybody este domingo. All right, God bless. Bye.